All right, today's review is on weather, whether you want to or not. All right, a meteorologist is a scientist that uses special tools to help him or her to study and predict the weather. So here we have our cute little meteorologist guy giving his weather report, and these are some of the tools that he could have used. So weather is the day-to-day -day state of the atmosphere for a given area. Um, an analysis of the weather data is used to predict weather events, which can impact ecosystems, which is fancy talk for weather analysis is where they take and um, look at their data and then they predict what the weather is going to be like. So we can decide whether we want to wear shorts or pants or a jacket or whether we need to carry an umbrella. Um, some of these impacts could include flooding, droughts, and destruction of habitats. Um, that's code for if they tell you there's going to be high winds and tornadoes or a hurricane. Uh, that kind of hints that there's going to be some flooding or some destruction. Now, climate is a little bit different from weather. Weather is the day-to-day. -day. Where climate is weather over an extended period of time, when you take the weather data of at least 30 years, then you can talk about the region's climate. And when you talk about the climate of a region, you talk about average daily temperature, you talk about humidity, you talk about wind, and you talk about the amount of particip participation. You participate, the rain will precipitate. Okay? Um, so looking at the weather over a long period of time, you can determine a region's climate. All right, so one weather tool would be a thermometer, and a thermometer is used to measure thermal energy, and thermal energy is just the fancy words for heat energy. Here's a rain gauge. It's exactly what it sounds like. It gauges how much rain there is. Uh, basically, it's this cup and when it rains, it catches the rain. And then you read it and measure how much rain is in there. So it measures the amount of precipitation over a certain period of time. Remember, precipitation is any form of water that falls from the sky, a.k.a. rain, snow, sleet, and hail. All right, here we have a nice, beautiful weather vane or wind vane. Basically, it blows and it points which way the wind's blowing. Okay, it tells you wind direction. A wind vane is also called weather vane. It's one of the oldest weather tools. It's a tool for measuring wind direction. It spins on a rod and points in the direction which the wind comes. Here is a barometer. Okay, a barometer is a weather instrument that is used to measure air pressure changes. Okay, air pressure is the weight of the air. Falling air pressure means that a storm is coming. Rising air pressure means that it's clear or the weather is clearing. So a barometer measures air pressure. This is the easy one. Okay, it's easy as ABC. A for air pressure. B for barometer, C isn't that easy. Here is an anometer. Anometer measures wind speed. Wind speed is how fast the wind is blowing. Okay, so what happens is the wind is caught in little cups. It causes it to spin, and then the little dials will count it up, and it will give you data and tell you how fast the wind is blowing. So anometer measures wind speed. Hygrometer, okay. Hygro or hydro has to do with water, okay. So a hygrometer measures humidity, and humidity is the amount of water vapor in the air, okay. And you can get different ones. Um, the two pictures here, one is a digital, one is, is a dial. Um, you can get them in all different ways. So a hygrometer measures humidity. And humidity is the amount of water vapor in air. Here we are looking at some lovely clouds. 
These are cumulus clouds, white and fluffy with lots of blue sky, and they indicate fair weather. So if you were to look outside and see this kind of sky, you would go, ooh, it's a nice day to go do something outside. These are cumulus clouds. Now, as cumulus clouds gain more and more energy from collecting water vapor, they're not as cute. They turn into cumulonimbus clouds. Now, cumulonimbus clouds, they started as cumulus clouds and then they gain more moisture and they grow bigger and bigger and bigger until they're in these giant clouds. And when they get really big, they go higher up in the atmosphere where the wind is blowing faster and they get this anvil shaped top. And these type of clouds usually bring thunderstorms. So when you see this type of cloud, you know that a thunderstorm is probably coming. Stratus clouds are low, smooth, gray clouds that cover the whole sky. Okay, they come with light rain or snow if it's cold enough. Um, stratus clouds make me sad. S for sad, S for stratus clouds. Look at this weather. Doesn't it look all sad? That's the kind of weather. It's going to be rainy and grumpy all day. And you go curl up into the bed with a good book. And just relax until the sun comes back out. Okay? S for sad. S for stratus. Low, smooth, gray clouds that cover the whole sky. And you get light, rain, or snow. Now these are pretty amazing. These are cirrus clouds. Um, high in the atmosphere, the higher you go, the colder it gets. So when this water vapor gets higher into the atmosphere, it actually freezes. And then it starts making these feathery clouds that are made out of ice crystals, which look like this. So you have high feathery clouds made of ice crystals. These are cirrus clouds. And these cirrus clouds represent that there's fair weather now, but it may indicate that rain or snow is, is coming in a few hours. All right, one of the storms that you have to know would be thunderstorms. Um, thunderstorms kind of give away what it is. A thunderstorm has thunder and lightning. It has rain and wind. It can have hail. Um, and there's a possibility if the right wind conditions happen, you could also get a tornado. Tornado is our next storm to talk about. These normally occur during a thunderstorm. Um, it's a column of extremely strong winds that is shaped like a funnel, and it causes damage just along its path. So if its path is 100 feet wide, it's only going to make damage 100 feet wide. If it's a mile wide, it's going to leave a mile wide path of damage. But it's only going to cause damage in its path. So you might be 50 feet one way or the other way, and, you know, if you were in a neighborhood and a tornado come through, it might clear out houses in one street, and the next street might not have any damage at all. So tornadoes are very dangerous, and they cause extreme damage, but they only cause extreme damage in a specific path. Here we have a hurricane. This is a satellite image looking down onto the hurricane. You can see that in the center of the hurricane, there is an empty spot that's where it, that's called the eye. And in the eye of the hurricane, it's very calm. Um, and usually this eye, it, it's many, many miles wide. Um, I remember when I was in Suffolk, um, there's a, a hurricane coming through. It, you know, it was terrible. It, the wind was blowing. The rain was raining. I mean, it was just awful. And then all of a sudden, poof, the skies were blue. It was beautiful. All the rain stopped. You couldn't, I mean, you walked out, everybody walked outside and you could see everybody standing around looking, you know, there's floodwaters everywhere and you're looking around and it's everything blue and calming. Um, 
and that was the eye of the storm. Then you had to go back inside and wait for the rest of the storm to cross over. Okay, so a hurricane starts as a cumulonimbus cloud. Most of the hurricanes that we get start as a cumulonimbus cloud in Africa. They gain energy from the warm ocean water as it comes across about, about the equator. Uh, because you have that wind pattern that circles there. And as that cumulonimbus cloud, that thunderstorm comes off of Africa and it starts gaining more and more energy, that's when you get a tropical storm. And then if the tropical storm gains enough energy, and it can develop into a hurricane. Um, hurricanes can be hundreds of miles wide. Uh, in this case, this hurricane is, you can't tell it, but it's covering um, all of Florida. That's how large this hurricane is. It's, it's covering all of Florida. So this one is pretty big. Um, it causes a lot of damage along the coastlines, um, rain, strong wind, large waves, flooding. But as it goes on to land, it loses that energy. So as soon as it gets off of the ocean and starts going onto land, it starts losing energy until it, it's down to a tropical storm, and then it's just down to a, a regular thunderstorm. Where a tornado causes one thin path of damage, hurricanes can cause damage along multiple countries or multiple states. All right, here we have, last but not least, we have just a basic weather map for you to look at. Now, you'll see weather maps all the time if you watch any news channel. They have all these weather maps. If you see a red, lumpy line like this, that's a warm air front. And a warm air front is just like what it sounds like. It's a warmer mass of air that's moving in the direction of the bump. So this warm air is moving this way. And warmer doesn't necessarily mean warm. If it's 29 degrees Fahrenheit here, your warmer air front could be 35 degrees Fahrenheit. That would be warmer. Okay. Now if you look at this one, this one has, you know, it's it's got some pokes and this is a combination of both. But here you have blue with spikes. I call them icicles. Blue with icicles. It makes sense. This is a cold air front. It's bringing a cooler mass of air. And even though it says cold front, it's not necessarily cold. If it was 95 degrees Fahrenheit here, and this was 85 degrees Fahrenheit, that's cooler. It's not necessarily cold, but it is cooler. So a cold front brings cooler air, and it's moving in the directions of its little pointies. So this cold air front's moving this way, where this cold air front's moving this way, they'll end up meeting in the middle. All right, now, low air pressure. That's where you see the L's. Low air pressure is an area of lower air pressure, and it usually indicates that there's stormy weather. You're gonna, it's going to be cloudy and you're going to have some high winds. So anywhere you see an L, that's probably going to be cloudy and have some high winds. All right. High air pressure, that would be your H's. Anywhere you see an H, that's an area of higher air pressure. Higher air pressure indicates fair weather with light winds. So anywhere you see an H, that would be higher air pressure, and that would be fair weather with light winds. All right, you know the deal. Have a great day.